Well, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's review a little bit of where we are as we hop on the great elevator of love. So we are stuck. We are stuck on our good friend, Demon Lurker, Fire Lurker, Fire Fart Head, Flame Lurker, Fuckface McGillicuddy. I don't recall exactly what the name of the hero is that we're trying to take down. But I just, I, I, I literally find the run to Lava Man so long and I feel so not powerful enough that what I am actually going to do is journey into World 3 and then see what's up. Is this Patches? Well, I remember you. Well, I'm glad you're here. I found some really tasty trinkets. We've long been acquainted, so I'll give you a good price, eh? Patches the hyena, I knew it. Oh, this just transports me back to the Nexus? Good lord, that's pricey. MP? Well, I don't... Well, I don't use that. Alright, whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna go straight into World 3. Ooh, Tower of Latria. Prison of Hope. Condassus' Patches is one of the best NPCs ever written. Fight me. Oh, no. The best NPC is, um... What the fuck is his name? From House of the Dead 2. <laughs> is it Gorman? The final battle. <laughs> What's the final? What are those lines, uh... To disrupt the life cycle. <laughs> oh, this is a mood. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah, to disrupt the life cycle. So this is it. This is where I. This is the archetype I spawn in. Oh, I didn't even see that there were these characters on here. Shadowcast TV. It's been a minute. Swarming on in with ten gifty, thrifty, subby wubbies. These are not NPCs. Oh, I just learned that they do have forward kick in this game, the same way they did before. Shadowcast says, I heard you like money, so I gave you money. That's right, that's how this relationship works. I yell, money, 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 please, and you go, very well. What do you think this is, huh? I heard a please help me, but I don't know where that came from, huh? Hear him in there. Shadowcast says, I need some of that good luck for my interview tomorrow, man. Good ass luck. G Frank says, I heard you just enjoyed my company, so I gave you my free Bezos bucks. Hey, we love Bezos bucks here. Holy shit. Prison of Hope. So that's that weird sensation I was experiencing. That was hope right there. Yeah, of course. Of course you can come over, darling. Let me move all my stuff. Yeah, let me move this. There you go. 
I have a strong feeling we ain't gonna we ain't gonna be living very long here. Fresh spice. Feeling nice. Immortal Wombat says, I forgot I had a sub. This has honestly made my day. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hey, what you doing? Sheriff, come here. What are you eating? What are you eating? My god, why do animals just fucking eat everything? Whoa. I was kind of not expecting any of these to open. do that too. I don't even understand what it is. I was talking to my friend about dog ownership, and it's just like ridiculous. Just what? How often I feel obligated to talk to my dog in this voice. What are you doing? What's, why? What is the matter with you? And of course, because it's a dog, and I'm talking in a higher pitched, exasperated voice, the dog's like, oh, I'm doing the right thing. Listen to how happy my owner is. Oh my god. Dog Dad loves this. Listen to that. Like, if I wanted to convince my dog that it was doing something bad, I should growl at it. Mercury Stone Shard. Welcome to Shard Souls. A renowned warrior soul. Yeah, I realize I never went down that way, but that's okay. Narrow alleyway souls. Sad Fat Man says my dog loves to eat cat poop out of the litter box. Disgusting. Yeah, my dog did that. I had to, like, hide the litter box from the dog. Yeah, what you doing? Meow, meow. Ted Lux is always actually talking about whenever I'm out on a walk with my dog and she does something naughty. I sit there and give her a lecture for a good five minutes. Oh, Jesus H! Fifty point two percent. You know what? It's fat roll time. Hello. Ah. All right. I mean, look at the artistry of this. Was that a mind flare? I don't know. Guy certainly looks flareful. Oh, nice. This is great. And 
this, the audio in this game right now is, is messing with me a little bit. So I'm actually, uh, I'm curious how many people here played the original Demon Souls, because like, I feel like this is such an interesting relic of the past. It has all the cool stuff of like modern Dark Souls and like all the <laughs> problems of uh, weird Dark Souls design. Rackshire did. Deus Macarena says I still play the original. Pan Man loved the original. Yeah, I remember when it came out. Like I had a friend who tried to speed run it. Oh, oh, look at this. Alright. So maybe I need to scout through this. Oh, I see. Alright, so this is the key, but it doesn't open nothing, huh? Brave Probes his original Demon Souls blew my mind. I literally cannot believe this game. It came out in 2009. Like, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Like, I'm thinking, what, what are the most influential games of all time? in your mind. Because, I mean, like, okay, here, here's the thing. From the year 2000 and onward, let's try this one. Let's try this one. From the year 2000 and onward. Because I know that there's there's things like uh, you know, Tetris and Pong and things like this that I, I recognize the merit of some of these early games, but I, I mean, I, I feel like, you know. Oh, Goldeneye, yeah. We're gonna be plucking tip-top titles out of this list for a while. You know, I'm really worried that the thing that I need to do is throw my body off and land down here. I think this is what I have to do. Everyone turn off the stream. Uh <laughs> Fuck man. Do I still keep this key? Oh, it opens the hallway. Mockthal gifting five to our death. Okay, okay, okay. Nice. Well, that's kind of cute. Well, I mean, I'm going to go back and get my souls. Oh, Ultima. Ultima's a good one. Ultima's a really good, like... Here there be famous open world logics. Cell key. Alright, so now I can... So now I'm going to go into each of these one at a time. I'll do this side last. When will Strixhaven site review happen? Tuesday. Tuesday. Ultimate's four 2000s now. I know, I know. I'm horrible. I'm like, guys, nothing uh, after, before the year 2000. Should have said before the year 95. That's better. Did you miss Flame Lurker? No, I skipped it. I'm just gonna switch to this thing for this hunting. Can you 
thing about the Ultima games is that they're really some of the first open world RPGs in the sort of Skyrim vein. I played the ever living fuck out of Ultima 7 as a kid. Hello. Why is there one of these guys here? Holy shit! The audio changed sharply. Wow, it was one of those influential games of all time. Yeah, may and I feel like maybe we need to give a nod to EverQuest as being one of the real first. Shadow of the Colossus, you know, like... Yeah, the ambient music here is insane because it's emitting from a location in the game. Okay, so since I can only do little blips at a, at a time here and there, why do you think... Or not think... Why do you think or not think that Shadow of the Colossus is one of the greatest games of all time? <laughs> oh, this is such content. Alright, screw it. We'll never get it. Oh, I actually know why it was so influential. I'm done. Shadow of the Colossus was the first game that had parkour, right? Wasn't it the very first game that had the idea of climbing on stuff? And the gameplay was super... Holy shit! stream. Guys, we have a little tiny friend. It was like the first game that had like really impressive like modern. Ow, you little butthead. Oh, you're so beautiful. And also I feel like Shadow of the Colossus was influential because it was so distilled. Yeah, I guess Sha technically Shadow of the Colossus was predated by, um, technically was predated by Tomb Raider, but I feel like Shadow of Colossus was really brilliantly implemented. Thing a ring a roo. Hey guys. There's only one of these. What was the original Prince of Persia before um, Shadow of the Colossus? I think you must be correct. I think yeah, I think I'm completely incorrect on that one. Yeah, I think that it was not at all the first game to do any of that shit, and I'm completely incorrect. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm I think I'm completely incorrect. So the original, original, original Prince of Persia uh, was God must have been late eighties, very early nineties. I think it was like eighty seven and eighty nine, or maybe eighty nine and ninety one, something like that. And then you have, um, there was the Prince of Persia Sands of Time, which was 2003, I think, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm completely incorrect on my analysis of, uh, which came first. Oh, look, it's all these wizard things. Yay, wizards. Ah! 
So, I mean, like, kind of building on what I was talking about last time while we were live, I feel like the real achievement of the Souls game is determining... Oops, 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 oops. A new kind of internal logic. Oh, why can't I have shield up you, buddy? And by internal logic, I mean, you know, in this game, it's the slow and plotting, deliberate combat. The twisting, but satisfying and rewarding level designs. The brutality of the experience in so many regards. That causes you to pay attention to your environment so you actually can appreciate all this stuff. That, as I was saying before, like, if you played an action RPG like Diablo 2, you might say, Oh, you're gonna make a... Third-person ARPG will really increase the rate at which you can cast abilities, make it really punchy and really satisfying. Um, oh my god, Deadly Ginger. Gifted us 50 subs, Deadly Ginger, uh, on our good day of February 10th. Came in and gifted maybe 200 subs. I mean, it was, it was absolutely ridiculous. And Deadly Ginger has since then been coming in Dropping all kinds of subscriptions, shows of support, warm cheer. Oh, Deadly Ginger, 42699. Says, uh, not going to watch long to avoid spoilers, but so glad you're playing more of the Souls games. Enjoy the subs. You're too kind. You're too kind, Deadly Ginger. You're too kind. Ah! But I can assume that Deadly Ginger was only so eager to gift because of our incredible points. Oh. Uh, Maddie's Fattest, did you ever play the old school Monkey Island uh, uh, for PC? I not only have played it, it is on my YouTube, fully uploaded, in a show I do on Monday nights called Mostly Walking. But yeah, like, the internal logic of this game, as I was saying yesterday, is, like, how brilliant it is to be like, Oh my gosh, you, you, you are making an action RPG? Make there be really aggressive, fast, punchy combat, like in Diablo 2, like in Diablo 3. Yeah, like, it's really easy to become obsessed with what was, with the logical structure of what was. And that's not to say that the spammy ability heavy action RPG is somehow... Wrong or bad. In fact, we well know that that kind of game is really, really popular. Just look at Path of Exile and all these other looter shooters that are out there. It's really, really satisfying and fun. I don't know how the hell to get these guys down. But this game figured out a new kind of internal logic. And I feel like that's... Maybe the metric that I might say is the... What I would point to when I say, wow, this game is really one of the most influential games of all time, is that it's a new kind of internal logic to a game. Real Pardo says, when you were mentioning old RPGs, made me think, did you ever play Betrayal at Crondor? I sure did. And Sean Bloom, that I do a show with every Monday evening. Um, it's one of his favorite games of all time. Hey, guys. If I swipe in the middle, though... So good. Yeah, let's see. What what are what are some games that presented an internal logic that was just striking and moving in a way that was sort of unseen.
Let's see, Pokemon. Yeah, I think Pokemon I would consider to be really influential because um, it was about collection. Lucas Mortori says, nice shirt. Thank you, Lucas Mortori. You can't see, but it barely fits me. Keep on, keep on swinging, swinging all through the night. Oh, missed. Yeah, missed. I actually think has to go down. It's like a really, really influential game. Because when Mist came out, which was. Good lord, was Mist 91? 89, 91? Yada, 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 yada. Ninety-three. It was some odd year in the early nineties. Oh, I'm not gonna go in there. But I think that, like, um, what I think made Mist really influential as a game is that um, it had a really transportive sense of space and story and mystery to it. Because if you think about it, in 93, a lot of games that were before 93 were very much so... Um, there was the overly system-driven games, like a Pac-Man like a, well, basically any arcade game, right? And then there were, like, written games, that are or not written games, um, uh, uh, text-based games that had a lot of description, a lot of writing in them. Um, but Myst just had, like, a fidelity to the animations and the world that was just, like, insane. Did we finish the lava boss? Nah, we're gonna... Jesus, that actually fucking frightened me. Because it's kind of interesting, because it's like... Some of the games are influential because of what the idea behind it is. But others are influential because they execute upon something that makes you go... Oh, I fucking get this shit now. Like, oh my god. Got a bunch of assassiny stuff. And I feel a little bit like Mist is that, where they worked really hard to try to make it a world driven game and to try to make you really immersed in the various worlds that were created there. I'm just gonna check the edges to see if there's any keys around here. Yeah, Super Mario, I think, was an incredible uh, influence in terms of just raw platforming. Now, how the hell do we open this? Hmm. Where the hell? Is any... Oh my god. Am I missing something really obvious here? Right, because we came up through here. Is there like a hallway that I missed? <coughs> oh goodness. Super Mario Brothers introduced, like, an entire gameplay built around jumping and approximating your, your jumping.
Gesundheit, thank you. Thank you. Alright, I, I, it might be time for chat-based Marco Polo in a second here. Um, okay, so my assumption is that I need to find a key. And that it's probably in one of these cells. A newbie place is, uh, I, I've, um, watched a couple of folk play this game. I still don't understand the whole light-dark alignment stuff and why you can't actually get your health bar to full. Yeah, like, so this health bar here... When I die and I get resuscitated, I am uh, in a non-corporeal form. I'm not an actual living being, so I can only get about half my health back. However, I can get things that restore my humanity back. Now we're going to take a break from talking about amazingly well done games. To line up in the Q2... Okay. Manifest says you totally missed on DDR in terms of influential. Maddie is fatty. How dare you, Maddie is fatty. Look, it's not that I missed it. It's that we're in the middle of the conversation. I posed the question, what are some of those influential games of all time? We started to talk about it. I didn't miss a goddamn thing. This is like me saying, I will now draw a circle. And I go, er, and you like pull the pen out and go, that's not a circle. How dare you, Matty is fatty. Matty is fatty sends a heart. How dare you send a heart? Um, let, me, let me back up this question from um, Synthetic. It's actually a long time night. Uh, or at least I've seen your name around here for a long time since the tech. It says, My girlfriend just broke up with me out of the blue, which is hard, Sean. I value your advice a lot. Could you give me some advice on how to deal with this in a non-destructive way? Absolutely, synth tech. You know, let me tell you a very important step one that's a very hard step one that I did not understand as a kid. You gotta take no for an answer. You know? Sometimes when it's like, I don't want to be together, I'd be like, oh, okay, but maybe if we could, like, still be friends, and if the friendship can grow to a place where maybe we can be together again? No. You have to hear that she's not interested in being in a relationship, and that does suck, and that's hard. But the sooner that you can just accept, oh, oh, it's you. Jeez, the sound design of that is just horrifying. The sooner you can accept this and just know, uh, it's really hard. <laughs> I know, I know this is bound to happen. Poisoned, okay. So our health is slowly draining, okay. Okay, so how long does poison last? So I'm going to study this poison for just a moment, because uh, I'm curious kind of how it works. But again, first things first, got to accept it, and it sucks. Second thing, second, in your communications with the last... Oh, do I only get half healing from poison? So if I consume this Noble's Lotus, and then I have the Half Moon Grass, wow, it returns even more. Um... If you're having communications with her, mentally prepare yourself and have pre-prepared concretely nice things you're going to say. And I don't mean compliments. Compliments are not nice things. They're compliments, right? And in fact, often compliments are a form of pressure. You're not looking for comments. You're looking for kindnesses. Look, yeah, no, I, you know, I'm hurt, but I want to let you know I'm okay. I totally respect your decision and I understand and I think you're a wonderful person still. Don't think that there, you did anything wrong. 
Like these are the kind you want reassurances to the other person. That's the second thing I would encourage. Again, accept it. Except this happened too. Have those reassurances. All right. Now that we got got that out of the way, right? This is what it means to be a respectful, a decent human being. Is those those two steps? Step three. It's time to focus all on you, synthetic. <coughs> Excuse me, synthetic or synthetic. I don't know exactly how to intonate your name. The first thing that I would recommend doing is I want you to think to this word a return to the things that you love. I love this phrase. The return to the things that you love that you care about. It's not do something fun. It's about a return back to who you are, what you're... Oh my fuck! It's a return back to the things that you love. So, you know, what, what kind of form might that take? Well, plan a little evening for yourself with shit that you love. Put on your favorite movie. Get your favorite food and your favorite drink. What's an album you haven't listened to in a while that you loved as a kiddo? Listen to some of that stuff. Like, just return to some of the stuff that you love and I love this word return I think about it a lot whenever I'm having a really hard time wait where's where's the the Heidi pack is it on this side it sure is so I mean like if I if I were dumped here's here's a mistake I did here's here's some don't do's Try to get validation elsewhere. Oh my god, I'm gonna go try to start training in StarCraft. Because if, if I'm good at StarCraft, then I'm a worthwhile person. Because I don't feel very worthwhile or worthy of love because I've been dumped. No, what happened is I would invariably have some evening where I'd be on a high, right? I would have won like 15 games in a row, tough games, feeling on, on top of my absolute A plus out of 10 vibe. And then I would lose a few games, and I just all of a sudden all that, it would just evaporate. <laughs> Slurped right out of me. Oh, 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 God. Oh god, I'm fucking worthless! Whoa! You know, all this fucking weep ass shit. I mean, it's the same reason um, why, you know, if you're having a really hard time, certain substances, I encourage you to avoid. Make yourself feel really good. I shouldn't even say substances, just certain, like, emotional highs that I guess I would encourage you to avoid. You know, things like. I knew someone who was a gambler, and when he'd have a really hard time, he'd go and try to get a huge win at the casino. You know, and when that wouldn't work out. Not only would said buddy be still sad, but he'd also be down a few thousand, you know. And I, again, like the best advice I ever heard was built around this phrase, a return to yourself. Oh, that's beautiful. A return to the things that make you happy. And I, I think that's a really beautiful perspective. Well, it was for me, at least. still intact, aren't you? Where do you call home? Dear me, I shouldn't pry. Oh, perhaps mm, you'd mm, like mm. something from my collection. I've known better days. I was once the wife of nobility, and I have some nice things to show. Former nobles, why, hey? Before, there were many others trapped here. You got it, Synthetech, my pleasure. Mad, and 
invention above of their own volition. Redemption. Yeah, I mean, I would say um, obtain more souls and slay enemies. No, I don't need no farming items. Ooh. Let's see, is there anything that deals damage in a way that... What about a rapier, huh? Well, that's quite all right. Yeah, like if I if I were dumped, if I were dating someone, I were dumped. What I would do is I would listen to some Blue Sky Black Death. I'd watch old Brood War VODs. I would order. Um, ooh, what sounds really good? Probably some Al Pastor tacos. I would cry. I would get some good weeping, and I would, I would, I would become a little super sober. Cry it up. They'd watch some K dramas. Ooh, yeah, Ethiopian food. Flip a killer one three three seven. I think that I have learned more about who I am and what I love after periods of real agony and sadness. When I'm by myself, I'm with my feelings, and I really gotta, like, figure out what is it that makes me happy. Here's Mark says, if you feel sad, cry. I had such a massive problem in the past with thinking that crying was the wrong thing to do after a breakup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember in college, this fucking girl... Broke up with me. It, to be honest, it's because I was, like, way too emotionally intense, right? Like, I, I... There's good, and then there's bad, right? And this is kind of the way we think of it. Like, but I'm really nice, and I'm really sweet, and I'm really awesome! Yeah, sure, whatever. It's not about the quality. It, intensity is a thing. M music can be good, but it can also be fucking loud. Lights can let you see shit, but it can be bright and hurt your fucking eyes. And Sean Plot, the college kiddo, was a lot. <laughs> I remember, I, I, in retrospect, looking back, like, I don't even remember what she said to me during the break, I watched her, I remember, looking back, I was just like, oh, yeah, that poor girl had to put up with me. I don't even like my memories of me. In fact, when I tap into the memories of me in college, I feel like I'm sifting through the thoughts of a psychopath. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna close this book and put it back on the shelf like it's Skyrim, I don't want these fucking memories. So... So she dumps me, and I was just like, Oh, it's fine, I'll get another girlfriend! And I was just like fucking white-knuckling, standing alone in a dorm room. There wasn't even Twitter where I could bitch. Right? So I just, Oh, God, I'm fine. I'm gonna put on my finest shirt. Which, by the way, baller party fashion back in 2005 was like a button-up shirt with long vertical stripes that went like halfway down your thighs, man. So I put on one of those. I put on a pair of torn jeans, a little sexy, a little alluring. Styled my hair with something, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know how to style my hair as an adult. And I went to a party where she had also dressed herself up to also go find herself a new man too. <laughs> and I saw her there and I was like, <gasps> she's too dressed up. And she saw me and was like, <gasps> he's too dressed up. And we both were just like, like fucking absolutely emotionally wrecked. I left the party. I went and left. <laughs> I went to go to this place that sold sandwiches at like midnight. So I went there to get a sandwich. And I was there eating my sandwich and like she walks in again. I'm like, no, it's a fucking college of 800 people. My life is ruined. <laughs> I will never get away from here. Ah! Um, I don't even remember which direction we came from or which way we're going. I think I'm going this way. So don't do that, man. So the fact, just be sad, man. Just be sad. It's alright to be sad. It doesn't feel nice, but it's alright to be sad. Hmm. Matty is fatty. He says, RTS extraordinaire. Sean, between Age of Empires, Command and Conquer, or Starcraft, what is the most influential? Um, it is, without a doubt, inarguably, objectively, Starcraft. If not for the very sole reason that StarCraft was the game that showed everyone that esports was possible. In fact, there's this wonderful book that I strongly recommend all of you read. Um, where is it? 
that talks about this. It's called uh, Korea's Online Gaming Empire. I think it was published in 2010? When was this published? I read it really early in my career. 2010. Damn, I'm fucking so sick. Uh, Korea's Online Gaming Empire that talks a great deal about the um, rise of the competitive pro scene of Brood War. Um, And, I mean, even to this day, many, 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 many um, companies look back and keep trying to emulate what happened with Korea. <laughs> you fuck. Now, because I went farming for these objects, I have so many um, crescent grasses. I'm going to wait for a little bit. This is, this is a research moment. I'm going to see how long poison lasts. Ring of magical sharpness. Huh. Flame Lurker done today. R said pirate. We're going to do it closer to the end. Closer to the end. But yeah, like... Um, maybe someone can tell me. Does poison wear off in this game? Because I know it had that little slow depletion bar. Anyways, StarCraft is inarguably still the most influential um, RTS and maybe game, uh, or one of the most influential games of all time, largely just due to its esports scene. Because it showed that people did want to watch it, that you could create a culture around it. Because, I mean, a lot of these broadcasts in Korea were getting three to four million viewers a day. I mean, it was insane just how popular it was. I mean, it supported a huge amount of the uh, content on two TV channels, NBC and OGN. It proved to everyone worldwide that games could be esports. Viking Prime says, why do you think it didn't last? StarCraft or esports? Because <laughs> I think esports is doing great. Um, this shit takes forever to wear off. I'm gonna do one more refill and see what happens. Um, but I think that one of the, you know, what happened with StarCraft 1 in particular... Um... Viking Prime says, because League still seems to be alive 10 plus years later. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you with a kind of... I'm going to hit you with a kind of... Uh, not as in League kind of is here. Obviously, League is still doing very well. Um, but I think that the, the references that you're using as facts are not exactly accurate. Because StarCraft 1 was an easy, came out in 98 and up into the release of StarCraft 2... StarCraft 1 Pro Gaming was doing well, and then it had a lull downward, and then it spiked back up again in 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Um, and still has substantial viewership. Um, like, I think in Korea, it's like League of Legends, StarCraft 1. Like, in order. Uh, my, my brother knows the numbers better, because he lives there and he does all the esports leagues out there. Um, The, the the sort of but Viking because Viking Prime says Aqua didn't know SC Brewer still has a huge viewership yeah yeah totally and things that I do want to like point to some nuggets in what you're saying of like okay well then let, let let's let's not frame it as here's a specific fact that we could poke holes and say ah that's not as true as as it might seem yada yada and say what's the deal with Starcraft Brood War and its history you know why did it not go from being the number one thing in Korea to being the number one thing everywhere in the world? And it's really interesting as an example of how um, esports differs from traditional sports. Because one of the biggest things is that in um, one of the most... Uh, where the fuck? So that's down to floor two. And this is to floor three still.
I'm slightly lost. But we're on the third floor again, huh? Isn't this like... Ah, that's where we started, huh? Yeah, nice. You can see the bonfire right there. So yeah, so um, w w first and foremost, one of the big reasons why any sports succeeds is culture. What do I mean by culture? I mean, hey Sean, young boy who lives in Kansas, every Sunday your grandparents watch the Kansas City Chiefs, so every Sunday they sit you down and ask you to come watch the Kansas City Chiefs football with them. And so they start to get raised watching football and a lot of families where I grew up would it was just a ritual we bring your friends over we bring our our family friends over and it's an event and we all cheer and we all know it's fun to root for your favorite team whether it be in a real sport or a digital sport I shouldn't say real I should say a physical sport or a digital sport and similarly what would make someone like me get into the competitive brood war scene if my parents aren't showing me or my friends aren't showing me. It's that I fucking play it. So, South Korea had a huge move to develop like nationwide broadband in the very, very early 2000s and late, um, late, late, late 90s. Is this the lock? Where to go and what to do. So here's floor two. Do I even want to go here or is this locked? Got it. So maybe floor two is secretly my destination. Oh, what's this? So this implies to me that floor two is where we wish to go to. And then we're going to go down to floor one. So you had this huge explosion of broadband uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s in Korea. And there was also a program where a lot of retirees were, oh fuck, I can't remember it, but it's like they were given special either tax discounts or business incentives to um, cash out their retirement and open up PC bongs. And a PC bong is basically a place where there's a bunch of computers hooked up broadband connection to the internet and connection to everything on the uh, internal network and so in the early 2000s late 90s long before there was social media long before there was youtube long before there was even good online access for people to play games in the west in south korea suddenly a common place for kids to go hang out after school was at these pc cafes so the number of pc cafes was growing immensely Again, due to, these, due to these governmental incentives. What the fuck? Um, so, so it was like a real, a real intersection of huge growth in PC cafes, huge growth in broadband, and StarCraft was like the new, really rich, hot, deep game on the town. And so, just like what probably happened with some of you with your friend groups, like in my friend groups, we played a lot of Soul Calibur. We wanted to go to arcades and see if any other kids also played Soul Calibur who could measure up, and if there were good Soul Calibur players, we'd be like, oh my god. Ah! I knew I heard your tinkling. Um... You know, in, in the same way that we look for those Soul Calibur players. Um, in South Korea, it was just this instant, okay, who is the best Brood War player? Ooh, we all play, we all want to know, and all of a sudden, it starts getting broadcast on television. 
So naturally you're going to start tuning in. Watching all the good juicy uh, gameplay. And thus this esports phenomena. Starcraft Brew War was bo born. Yo. Well, you are a sane one, are you not? So if we ask the question, Viking, name is Rydell. after we hear Rydell Please. say some bullshit, Liberate me from this, jail. this is you, but instead of jail, I it's boredom. Precious little time. I must retrieve an article from my corpse. Um. Uh. Um. And so when you when you start saying, okay, so, like, what are some of the ingredients to the success of an eSport? The answer is, like, do people play this game a lot? Is there interesting? Shut the fuck up, baby. Um... Is it is it watchable? Like many of you may not know this, but Counter Strike, which I still maintain is maybe the best esport, is just so unbelievable. Like broadly speaking, like the number one. Considering things like depth, history, uh, so this is is this floor two? Uh, you know, observability things like this, but. I don't know if any of you know this, but it was hard as fuck to watch Counter-Strike back in the day because they didn't you couldn't see through walls the way you can now. I can't even tell you how impossible that shit was, man. It was terrible. <laughs> like I remember watching uh, the legendary 3D play Counter-Strike. And they were hot shit, man. They were, like, amazing. And, I mean, it was so hard to follow. I had I had intimate knowledge of Counter-Strike gameplay. I played in competitive leagues and shit as a kiddo, you know. And I was just like, I do not understand what the fuck is happening. Like, so... I mean, in terms of, like, some of the ingredients for making something observable... Making something watchable, making something understandable. What in the actual literal fuck was that? Well, I'm definitely not going to round this corner. So I think a mix of do a lot of people play the game? Is the uh, game easy to observe? Does the game have different scenarios that emerge from it? And, you know, in the early StarCraft days, uh, did a lot of people play the game in South Korea? Absolutely. The second one, did was it observable? Yep, I think top-down, uh, or just more broadly, gameplay that happens in two dimensions is much easier to track than gameplay in three dimensions. Or the third one, um, how do you make sure that different scenarios happen? Well, StarCraft didn't just have a real richness of strategy. The tournament organizers aggressively rotated the maps a ton and, const and actually were in situations where they were like, well, we need more good Protoss players because the Terrans and Zergs keep winning. So they started to change their map design to help Protoss players specifically. Uh, so there's all these things that helped really make it succeed. And I think that for the question of then, why did it not continue to be... Uh, well, why didn't it just flourish in all these other areas? Well, in the West, like particularly in America consoles were substantially more so the focus than PCs. Consoles, like the Xbox, being able to network them together, bring your buddies over for Halo. This is where a lot of the early 2000s um, gaming and esport culture grew in America was around console games like Halo. Um, and just not that many people had continued to play StarCraft. Um, 
can't see shit, man. I'm sure a giant dragon's gonna come fucking kill me. What can you do, man? Oh, there he is. Hey, guy. Alright, I'm not fucking going that way. And so, like, um, eSports also kind of has some different qualities compared to other sports, which is the idea of how the game changes. In traditional sports, there is substantial change in a way that is not acknowledged enough, which is... Oh, hello. I don't know what it was trying to do, but this is Dark Souls. You don't give them time to find out. Um. I'm a mum, a mum. Brightwater. Pirates of Brightwater. So in sports, the players change, man. One year, your team has an incredible, you know, I'm just going to say incredible defense, because I don't know enough about sports to know what the hell I'm talking about. And the next year, they have an incredible offense, and then they have someone who can throw far but doesn't run fast, right? Like, the components are constantly changing. You can send shit to storage? What button is this? Can I just send stuff to storage right now? Can I? Ha ha okay, wait, okay. First, first. How do you send stuff to storage before I move on? I have I have claws. Can you can you send this stuff to storage here? Press X. Ooh. See secret dagger. Secret dagger. Secret 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 dagger. Probably should have looked at what any of that shit was. shit how do I how, what what is the cause of this obesity oh I bet you it's these fucking three it would be send them all seven pounds of grass are you fucking kidding me <gasps> I am wearing this. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I'm racked. Absolutely devastated. Okay. Anyways. In traditional sports, you have the rotation of the different players that kind of changes what the pieces are. Now, with games, how do I experience the game and feel that kind of change that keeps it fresh and interesting, despite some of it not changing? Because certainly the rules of StarCraft don't change, but by God, the map changes, and that really shifts and adjusts a, a ton of how things go. And I think that also you have things like uh, take in the fighting game scene where you have something like a Street Fighter. I mean, I hear enemies. Oh, they're in the vases. Oh, look, it's you. Hey, I found you. There you are. Hello. Oh, I love watching Day 9 TV inside this giant vase. No!
you don't like being stabbed, do you? Oh, you don't like you don't like that, huh? But I think that, like, for instance, with fighting games, Street Fighter V comes out, and all the Street Fighter IV players are interested. That's, that's its form of rotation. Dota rebalances heroes, adds new items, adds new heroes. That's how it keeps its thing fresh. How much do I get from this? 1,036 pickup sticks. Aged Spice. So I came from over here, huh? Nice. Spice Life! So I think that something like League of Legends has been really interesting as a way to, or as a game, because League of Legends, I think is, uh, I don't know how to describe it, I think that League of Legends gets it. I think they get it. Because it feels like every season, League of Legends tries to do some... And I'm going to put substantial in air quotes, because obviously many of the heroes stay the same, and the way that items and abilities work and damage works, that stays the same, largely. But it feels like every year, they attempt to do a substantial system rework with it. Maybe how the mastery system works. Maybe how some other component of the game works. I'm not a, a, a League of Legends player, so, so forgive my... Incorrect naming of shit. Um, so I think that they, they really get it. They really understand what it means to um, keep their game fresh and keep their game interesting. And I think for this reason, it, it's kind of funny. Well, I, I feel like the underlying thing is you want some change... You just want the right amount to change. Like, we might call it an 80-20. You want your game to be 80% the same with 20% of variety in there. And you know what a really great example is? Playing a game of Dota, at the end of it, you load up another game of Dota. The next game of Dota you play is like 70% the same as the last game, 30% different. Ooh, you know. Like, it's, it's false that if I'm firing up another game of Dota, I'm in the exact same position, on the exact same team lineup, against the exact same team lineup, every time. And Viking Prime says, I'm wondering if these esports can last as long as normal sports. I actually think that what we're going to see is a um, degradation, slowly, of traditional sports, and have it in some way get replaced with, um, not replaced with, but... I think that it, it, it will spline downwards. But I think that the modern form of a good competitive game is something that is... And these are some bullshit numbers, but whatever. 70-30. The game... Motherfucking Demon Souls. <laughs> Jess 9000 says, there it is! Damn you, Jess. This is not the way I want to go. It's over that way, huh? Man, I was so careful. Looked away one time. Oh shit, these doors are open. see the curse. Anyways, I feel like 70-30, like 70% 70 a familiar experience where the fact that I have learned and improved is relevant. It actually carries over from game to game. And 30%, there's something fresh and new and interesting and different. Shh. 
shit. I guess I don't see how these things connect. Is it over here? Hey, buddy. Guess I'm wrong. Guess I'm wrong. What is it? Oh, I didn't see that. Thank you. No balloons. Anyways, um, I think that this is going to be a more desirable thing, especially given that gaming is so much more participatory. It's, it's so much easier to just fire up a game of Dota at home than it is to, like, go to a park, hope that there's enough people around for a pickup game. And then I think the entrance is that way? Ah, shit. I, 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 I created all these shortcuts and I lost track of where they went. I was just doing too good. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I remember something. I think I remember something. I think I go up and then I go down. And I think that the thing with traditional sports is that, like, it's there's a real barrier to participating. And uh, still, to this day, the number one factor that determines the viewership of an eSport is its player base. Player base size, that is. I think so. I go to. F Holy shit, what are you doing here? Oh my god. Fuck. Do I like loop around to there or some shit? I just... I don't remember how the area is connected. player base size is also a fact for traditional sports. Um, I'm sure someone has the numbers on that, but I don't. I only know esports. What was service is it's not always true. I think it's I think it's like literally studiably, objectively oh yeah. That there is a smaller barrier of entry to digital games than physical games. Where am I? Where the hell? I am so fucking lost, dude. Time to just whack my way through everybody. Ooh. Thought I understood how everything connected. I don't remember this area at all. Like, not even a little bit.
Yeah, but I think that there, there's substantial evidence that shows that, like, the barrier of entry to, like, literally pulling out your phone and playing a game is lower than, like, traveling to a field. I am so lost. I'm not even sure what floor I'm on. Let's find out. Have I been here? I don't even think I've been here. Hey, guy. Oh, God. Like, I, don't I can't even tell if I've been to these places. I thought that I was a short walk back to where I was before. I thought I'd opened up all the stuff and I was totally fine, but I think I'm wrong. I think I'm lost as shit. I think when I get there and I clear everything out, I'm gonna make a long walk back home. Actually, maybe I haven't been there. Well, says, don't you think the institutionalized toxicity in some communities like League of Legends 1 is a ma major barrier for new players to burst? I'm going to be really particular with my word choice here, which is that the toxic attitude that you see in many communities is bad. I'm not going to say it's not bad. And I'm absolutely certain that you can find me a player who says, well, I would have done that, but now I'm not going to because, you know, I find the game to just be, like, way too terrible. You know, I find the toxicity to be way too awful. You, you can find me those players. However, it's really, 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 really hard for me to ever accept any argument that says... Here's why League of Legends is a barrier to new players, when it's the most played game in the world. Now, I I'm saying this less to your actual question, uh, Rhea Wolf, and more to um, an argument I've had several times with several people. Um, particularly some of those in like the investment landscape who are like, well, you know, I just I think that the barrier to entry is far, far too high for League of Legends. And I'm like, you can't say that because it's the number one most played game in the world. Anytime someone's just like, you know what the problem with the new player experience of League of Legends is? My answer is nothing. Nothing, man. <laughs> well, let me rephrase it. It's not nothing. It's not like I accept that it could be improved, the new player experience, but I'm not going to agree that it's bad. Because it's like the most played game out there. Right, I'm going to go this way first. I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. And so, with all that said, with all that said, yeah, I definitely think the toxicity turns off a lot of people. And shitty communities can turn off a lot of people. Humorously, um, I, I don't know if any of you have heard me talk about this, but I don't want to say the Undertale community, but several people wanted me to play Undertale and were downright sh so shitty to me about it that I was like, God, okay, I was going to check it out, but like now I'm, I don't know, I just like, I don't want to, man. <laughs> like way too much negativity around this random indie game. Super Steel says, that's why this community is such a ray of sunshine. Oh, this community is the best.
Oops, I wasn't looking. Wait, well, friends, I thought Dana and I already killed this thing. I have a question, Biden friend. Have you have you played uh, the Souls games? Every time you die in a Souls game, every single enemy respawns. Uh oh, I'm dead. So that's 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 sort of one of the core challenges that made people go like, oh, what the fuck, right? Yeah, yeah, because you're like, oh wow, that's crazy. Yeah, this is why I have such admiration for from software. Is that they just want? Nope, this is the game. You literally have to figure out how to do it every single time. And it's funny because like if you think about it. There's not anything unfamiliar in other games. Like, if there's a platforming game and you have to go jump, jump, duck, jump, dodge, jump, and you die, the jumps are still there. But there's something about, like, enemies that make our little brains go like, oh, no, but I want the enemies to, to go away. I want to complete the enemies. One says, we're just doing our pot thing, Mr. Grace. says, you're killing us again. Sorry, guys. You gotta get out of those damn bases at some point. Ah, oh, yes. The good old 70-30 evaluation. So my presumption is that I'm going to find the um, second floor key, open it, and then I'm going to have a shortcut from the second floor to my starting area. Whoever had to light all these candles had the worst job. <laughs> oh. Well, they all looked like illusory walls. We were uh, lucky enough to be graced by the presence of one of the artists on this game. Nothing? Feel as though I have missed a relink point. That's that's what my sensation is. Uh, can someone just briefly? Um, I I, I know this is going to be a little bit of. Against my usual anti-spoilering, um, part of what I would normally do is return back and look through every nook and cranny um, to see if there is a key to floor two. Is there a key to floor two? What did I just get? Whoa. 
Warden's Passage. I wonder what this is for. Now, is this instant kill? It's not, so I can do some research. I feel like this is instructing me to go down here. Well, I love following instructions. That is the wrong ass button. Oh, thank God. This is about to be the worst game ever made. Nice. Very cool. Very, very good. Nice. <laughs> See, Travis is no looking at shower running down narrow ledges. <laughs> but you guys, come on. Okay. Any entryways for your pal day nine over here? Any entryways for pal day nine? Yeah, the, the B button is very scary. Jacob Goss's game does a terrible job of telling you when you can climb stuff. You know, I just think that this game is... I believe that I cannot go through there. Maybe there's just, like, one of these that I can randomly climb over. <laughs> you bastards. Well, so I guess I can't go that way. So we got the Warden's Key. Hmm. Alright. Uh, uh, I'm going to take a brief uh, break um, to just sit here. To just sit here. Um, so let me tell you what I would normally do right now. What I'm about to do is I'm about to just go start looking around and seeing for locations where I can use this Warden's Key. Um, but I, I just want to note something why. Why I'm so fascinated by this game, which is that I'm going to do a comparison that hopefully you as a gamer can relate to. Um, I don't know if you ever had this experience where you have a strategy that you really like, but you're starting to learn. By the way, let's go ahead and go see mentally pause the one hour because I know some of you are like, please, I need him to die three times in the hour to win the bet. Um, we're just gonna, we're just gonna, this, we're, we're in, uh, purgatory, don't worry, nothing's gonna happen, just wait, just chill, just chill. So, I'm sure many of you have had this situation, I'll do an example, uh, from, <laughs> right at the launch of StarCraft too. There were people that learned that you could get four gateways really fast, and just win by continuing to warp in units and killing your opponent, right? Something like this. And four gating was very popular because once you had the four gateways, you stopped doing anything except warping in units from your gateways. And this was actually a pretty good first strategy for a lot of people to learn because your games are quick. It's a very uh, simple build to focus on refining. And you get to do a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fighting, 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 fighting. 
But then what winds up happening is you learn that good players just know how to scout for and hold off a foregate, and they do it every time. And a lot of players had the following experience where they went, oh shit. I now have to learn a new and different strategy. So they would go out and learn that new and different strategy, and the very first thing they would experience in the 10 new games with the new strategy is that they were losing like fucking crazy. They were getting absolutely schnauzer in these games. And so what wound up happening? A lot of people just quit. They were just like, oh, I just want to not do it. Oh, God, I want to go back to four gating. Oh, God. It, it's actually quite difficult, right? And, um, you know, it, it's, the, it's the theory of various peaks. You may have hit the peak with this strategy, but it doesn't mean that there isn't a higher peak with a different strategy. And with um, the internal logic argument I was making about the Souls game, they abide by a different internal logic, just like Viking Prime we were talking about earlier. And yeah, in Souls games, when you die, all the enemies respond. All of them. They're all back. Whoa, no way. That seems like a little too hardcore. At least let them die eventually or something. Nope, not the case. Not a chance. Um, and it's the kind of internal logic that kind of makes you, ooh, scary. Ooh, I don't want to venture into this new thing. But just like that four-gating player, if they suffer through some of those losses and then they finally learn a two-base strategy, they will be at a higher peak than they were before. If you tra take traditional ARPG design and you start to drift away from it, you will get a worse game until you keep pushing and keep refining the design to get Dark Souls. And what's fascinating to me about Demon Souls is that I would describe Dark Souls as an A-plus game. Or might you call it an A game? Demon Souls to me feels kind of like a C plus version of Dark Souls. And I don't mean this to say like, oh, it's C plus. It's like above average. It's not great. Like, ugh. what I mean is that there are enough gaps with what this game does that Dark Souls improved upon. It's fascinating to watch. So, for instance, when I was at the second area of the. Um, the Tunnel of Love, wherever it was, leading to the Flame Lurker, that whole section felt substantially weaker than the Gates of Boletaria. Um, and there's brilliant bits like the bridge in Boletaria where you... Um, where there's the dragon that's like breathing fire on the air, where you're just like, holy shit, this is moving. I thought the Gates of Boletaria area was A+. Plus, just perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, I was amazing. But then there were some real downsides. Or like just trying to find the monumental was so challenging. And I think that what's really interesting is that we as consumers are so often exposed to the finished product that it's very easy to see, or it's very hard to see the designs in progress or even understand or appreciate the designs in progress. I feel like Demon Souls is a little bit of peek into that, which I think is just fascinating. Just fascinating, 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 fascinating. All right, Ghosty, remove, resume the timer. Resume le timer. Oh, well, looks like I got really lucky. Also should be a door here. No. Right, I'm gonna go that other way. So this is the west side, yeah. I think it is. Oh 
I'm so bad at breaking stuff open. Experience points is man, they really did make this game gorgeous, didn't they? They sure did, my god. Okay. Interesting. Scared the shit out of me. Bumped into that. Also. So this appears to be where there's passages up and down. So we're on the east side. So this is... Still on the east. This is the second... What? Oh, shit. Come at me, bro. There we go. Now, I, I'm struggling because I... I can't tell if I've been here before. I might have. Because I was mentally going floor two, three, four. Oh, I have been here, haven't I? Fuck. Shit. Well, shit, I don't know where I am. How am I supposed to know where the hell I am, man? Give me a break. So, like... Maybe I'm not supposed to cross that bridge now. Maybe I am. I feel like the game has guided me to this point. Here's where I can't open any of this stuff, right? Got it. Great. All right, so I see now. So this is this is the quote-unquote shortcut. I see. I see. So we're actually in between floors two and three, which is why I was getting disoriented before. We're in, in between floors one and two, or whatever it is. I see you, Jangler. Look at the audio on this damn thing. Why is my sword setting him on fire sword? I have a fire sword. Is that a mind flare wearing old spice? Hmm. I'll be honest. Today something happened that I haven't done in a long time. I purchased deodorant. Hey buddy. You know what I'm saying? Now, for what it's worth, I I had deodorant uh, before. But there's times when you, like, run out of deodorant and quarantine, and you're like... Alright. <laughs> this is not a scratch and sniff stream.
Oh my god, experience points. Remember how it was a thing in middle school that people would use too much spray deodorant? Oh my god. 100% me. Right, 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 right. Poor wife. Well, I mean, I don't. I I shower. I shower. I don't. I don't really smell. Cause you go walk the dog, you exercise a little bit, you take a shower, you know that sort of thing. Hello, video game. Ah. Two sides to the same coin. Oh, shit. Oh, my God, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Big wide open space, I don't trust it. Not in a Souls game. Does it not open from this side? Is there a lever? Is there a lever? Hmm. Unknown Unknowns is asking about my Path of Exile plans. It's one of those games that I feel like I'm on the verge of playing it. I was going to do it when the new League came out, but it happened to be the exact week that the new Magic set comes out. And I hope you don't mind the unsurprising choice I make that the number one game that I stream, uh, I'm going to be playing its new set. Well, we're definitely not going that way. This is Mandy and I have played Path of Exile for a while. It's just so buggy now, and there are a few so many quality of life features. I, I again, I, I, I'm particularly sensitive to whenever someone uses strong language like refuse so many quality of life features. It could be that they say we are literally never going to implement this quality of life feature, which I would think of as a refusal. But I think it's more likely that the team just has not implemented some quality of life features. Which for me, I label as a different thing. Torquio says, I'm surprised that Sean is not playing the D2 Resurrection Alpha. I received an email from Blizzard like 14 hours ago. Well, I guess now it'd be more like 17 hours ago. So, I mean, if it's... If I'm getting noticed that late, it's just really, really hard for me to... Um, work around the fact that, you know, I, I plan several weeks in advance. By the way, just like having a thing there, I feel like is so powerful for letting me know that I can go there. I can't tell if I'm going farther away from where I want to be or closer towards, so I'm going to be very, very close. Oh, 
Holy fucking shit. Silver Catalyst. Imperial. Oh, shit. How's that guy doing there? Is there a way across? <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So Yandrin, um, I, my understanding is that Path of Exile has a, a like a a lot of lack of the crunchy AAA polish. that we gamers might want. God damn, I really want a fucking shortcut, like, real bad. Alright, I'm doing that one slower next time. I get so sick. the shortcut. Huh. Clever Rat's Ring. Okay, let's... So, so this is, I assume, the shortcut that I want to take. So if I... Hey, Desper. You know, sure. I feel like there's a shorter path to get here from my prison area that I don't know about. me sick. Oof. Is there, is there a way to get a badge for being banned? We could probably create a badge for that, but we, we don't want to. the nerd down here. What do you want? I am but a humble servant. I do not wish to interfere. Thanks, Dr. Zip, but I do like this shirt. You trouble. I won't. I won't. I just need to come back to him later.
Oh, come on. Dr. Professor, I'm gonna time you out. Um, like, like, please, please don't just spoil that I missed something. And go like, hey, you forgot to get this thing here. Like, you know, I'm... The struggle is the fun. Struggling and learning and going back and then discovering, that's the fun part. I don't like when someone comes in and takes away the fun part by going, Oh, go here and just get this thing. Alright, here we go. There's a key on the wall. Prison of Hope special key. Rats, rats, rats. I don't know what the special key is for. And by the way, I know you meant no harm by it, and you're just, you know, coming in and hanging out. I'm actually going to remove the timeout. I probably overreacted on that one. Especially given I'm seeing your, your uh, post-history, Dr. Professor. You've, like, said four things. <laughs> Uh, you, you said my bad. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't have reacted so harshly in that regard. It's just that, like, um, there was a deluge of backseating events that was not you. This is actually, okay, let's, let, let's talk about something while I try to go down this, this thing slowly. There's a huge, I don't even want to call it problem, but it's like a painful property of being a broadcaster. Which is that no matter how good and satisfying an explanation I give to an individual, the um, there will be a completely different stranger coming in with the same question in like two seconds. So for instance, if I have given six hours of great quality thoughtful control over like here's how our backseating policy works and everyone's on board and everything's great someone will just join in who's never seen any of that stuff and just be like hey you didn't get the key now that is fucking beautiful that. I need to do quick slashes when she has her. this um but yeah so i kind of wind up in this kind of catch 22 ish situation which is like no matter how good of an explanation i might provide doesn't matter because there's a new person here every 30 seconds uh-oh um well, I'm going to share my suspicion. I strongly suspect that there is a better shortcut to get here. What? Do I have to use it like this? But I'm 
What? What the fuck is going on? Oh. Fire sword's already on fire. Can't be any more fiery. I'm gonna kill this bitch. <laughs> 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 One shot plotted. Sure, glad I used my whole ass pine res. Did I play Sekiro? Yeah, I played it for a few days. I didn't stick to it as much. I kind of want to revisit it at a later date. That's the spear it damn Damaratus with the with the plays. Out for God's sake. Oh fucking shit. I just oh my god. So I hit this and then I hit this. And I hit this, and this, and this. There we go. one of those there's 12 illusions now yeah yeah I've played a souls game or two Holy fucking shit. I'm dead. Holy shit, chairs are terrible for you. Never sit in a chair. Are you kidding me? Okay. 
Alright, I think we might be able to do this. Half moon grass. If I can one shot this, god, that would be nice. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I see. She's just not... Oh, get me the fuck out of here. Okay. Oh! Fuck, I thought it was behind there. Rats, rats, rats. Okay. So let's see. If is this actually the shortest path? Cause I have the special key, but I don't know what the special key does. A special door and I just don't remember where or how to get to it. This might actually just be the fast path. Do these levels better or worse than Gates of Altaria? Uh, I mean, I guess I would say worse, but it's not like I dislike this level. I just thought the Gates of Altaria level was awesome. Special key is probably for the guy that's screaming help me. It's probably for that guy. Probably for that guy, huh? That makes sense. How do I get to him? Isn't it like... Here, walk down. Ah, uh, whatever, man. Fuck him. No, I, I think I do want to go this way. Come on. Ah, this fucking game. Oh, I'm alive. I saw myself die. Camera Souls is a tough game.
Is this really the fastest route? Where's this bridge? Is it really? Oh my god. Oh wait, what is gifting 22 subs? Oh wait, what? How in the hell are ya? Oh wait, what? Just once, I promise I'll make it a habit. <laughs> oh my god, there's so many subs that have flown in. What the shit? Where? How? What? What did I miss? An average game gave 21 during the boss fight. Holy shit, average game god. Oh, wait, what? Oh my god. Rakshire says, welcome to Latria. Thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome, kind of. What the hell am I missing? Was there a path that I just misplaced? What, what am I doing wrong here? Oh my god, I keep getting so damn lost in this dumbass game, man. like, okay, so here's like the prison area. Oof. Oof, 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 oof. Wait a minute. Is there a corresponding one to get over to there? Oh, this is a pretty great day. Thanks for asking. My vacation is finally, after six days, starting to have its intended effect. I feel that that is very true. Let me in. Without giving me any spoilers, the route that I just took, is there a faster way to get there? Don't tell me how if there is, but is there a faster way to get there? Because I feel like there's got to be a faster way to get there. I don't believe so, no. Holy shit, this game is brutal. Oh! Well, oh my god. Because there's the way past the, um, crunchy monster. The little squishy guy where all y'all were hanging out in, in uh, jars. And I can't believe this game has such tighter, or such, um... I can't believe how Dark Souls has much tighter paths to bosses. Dead. Never mind. dodge this. I don't even see them on the ground. Hybrasil, gifting 10. Saying, Sean, you can do it. 
Even though I'm worried I cannot. Not this. This is not it. Are these traps or something? I knew that was coming, but... Like, here's what I'm gonna check. If I just walk here, does it just go off? Okay, so so these these are actually traps on the ground. These are not being cast. These are just Okay. Oh, I see. So she plants them. Oh, it stays? This game is bullshit! What is actually fair in a way, if you think about it? This is it. Oh, that'd be so funny. Okay. Okay, this is good. This is good. Go this way. I trust this side more. I, think I should actually go this way given their spacing. Done it. So Arkles just gifted me ten because maybe I've done it. Well, hey, Swarkles, thanks for, uh, the support. I mean, I th do I just kill that guy, then?
All right, I'm gonna go kill that guy, man. All right. Right, says most boss fights don't let you exit fog. I know, it's terrible. So here's what I theorize. I, I think I just gotta kill that guy. I think that's what I'm doing. I'm killing him. No one can stop me. We fought Flamio Hot Man today. No, we haven't. Do you double wrap your burrito? Sometimes. If I'm feeling in the mood to gain weight, I sure do. Rashar says, there are some great aha moments in this game. It's so funny, because this game feels like 30% more obtuse than it needs to... Oh. Oh, well, would you look at that? Feels 30% more obtuse than it needs to be. Great. I did it. Sparkles, thanks for entertaining me while I'm at work by myself. He was a humble servant? Yeah, that's so great. Like, here's the thing. Prey slaughtered. We got him. He's down. Demon eliminated. I don't know how any of you can think otherwise. And here's my conclusion. There was one blood stain on the ground. I'm playing in offline mode. And it was like, the voice is resuscitating. I'm like, what voice? And the guy was like, bah, 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 bah. she will return. Bah, 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 bah. What did killing him do? I don't fucking know, Amaranth. <laughs> but I thought I think that this is the guy that's uh, resurrecting the idol. I think that it's it's him. That's the guy. That's what I think. So I think maybe now I've killed the lass and I need to re-kill the lass. Is what I think is going on. Mm, 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 mm. Ed Big Hat, I don't really play TTRPGs in my spare time. Pretty good, pretty good. Oh, you fucking piece of shit.
Bing. Mwah, 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 mwah. Cheers to me, Bing Bong. It's Bell Sean. The doubters and the haters have never known what it means to be good at a game the way that I know what it means to be good at a game. Sometimes I'm frightened by the gifts that I was given through the gene pool. I miss touching an arch stone, I'm gonna be so bummed. Oh, uh, let's go back to the Nexus. Well, we've long been acquainted. So on. Have any of that white sticky stuff, man? Where, where, where you off to? Where were you off to? I was worried sick. I was worried sick. Don't worry. Uh, mana regeneration. I don't need any of this nonsense. Uh, time to do some soul cracking, maybe. Yeah, get that over there, get that over there. Yeah, none of that stuff matters. Baby's nail? Ugh. Mercury rapier plus one. Oh! We are indebted to you. Actually, I'm gonna, let me, let me keep dumping stuff onto you. Hey, yo, 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 yo. I was worried. Yo, 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 yo. Okay, so what what is what is this what is this rape here all about, huh? Ooh. And what's our scaling like on Mr. Rapier? Oopsie daisies. E and a D. Dragon Longsword is uh, no attribute bonuses. Wing Spear is a D and a D. All right, I'm dumping that shit. Oh, I was worried sick. I was worried sick. I can forge weapons for you. Repair everything. Repair it all. Bam. All right. Confirm. Upgrade weapon. Wing spear to a to a plus five. Yeah. What about knight's shield? What does this even do to it? If I upgrade the shield, does it increase the block, or does it just increase the damage? This is a technical question. I would love an answer to. Sort of says, do we continue in World 3 or give Flamio Hotman a try? I'm going to do Flamio Hotman, like, way later. Oh, Drew Dog, thanks for sending me that email yesterday with the game trailer. That looked really creative. Zedrico 1 says, depends on the shield. Oh. I think it increases the stability. 
So how do I determine what the um, ow, good lord, how do I determine what the um, what the in improvement to the stability is? Oh, look at that guard break goes up, nice. Why not? Why not? Why like why not, man? Honestly, why not? All right. No, fuck no. I'm not offering you none of that garbage. Speaking of which, what is this thing? wonder what any of these things mean. Experience points is your think you won't fat roll. I like being a fat rolling boy. Uh, now, where is our Our Lady of the Leveling Up? Oh my god. Ah! Uh, does anyone know where she might be? Hey, yo. Are you here to face the demons? No. Where are you? She had a fine staff and a waxy eye. around here a lot of people the fuck is she cuz normally she's like here or she's over there How do I level up in this fucking game? Is she on this stair? Oh my god, where is she? If you see her, just point her out. Point her out. Is it? What are you doing up there? Oh! Touch the demon inside me, baby. Nope. I art thou. Doll demon soul, hard demon soul, iron demon soul, lead demon soul, storied warrior soul. Use! Use! Renowned hero soul, use all of them. Renowned warrior soul, use five of them. Unknown hero. Eat, eat his fucking souls. Eat every single one of those fucking souls and turn it into levels, please. Thank you very much. Endurance, endurance. Let strength. Dude, I've been getting like hypertension headache shit and it is so annoying. My neck is so tight. Yuck. Epilantria. Like right here. Like here. Like this. Like this thing right here is tense. Ay, 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 ay. Oh! Oh! Fucking hell, man. Haters burst into tears. No, you're supposed to march to your death. Well, they sure succeed in making the game fucking beautiful, huh? Nah. Self-massage them out as much as 
might suggest that I can. I've been trying to and I can't. Keep coming back. Sucks. Must be and it must be all of you trying to backseat me that's just ruining my mind and my head. It's just it's horrible. <laughs> can't believe you've done it. Hero soul. It's a hot Well, that's an elevator. Holy fucking shit. What are we doing? What are we doing? That's where I came from, huh? Huh. <sighs> really care, do you? <laughs> These guys drop so many unknown hero souls. I mean, this is beautiful. Blue Point are godlike. Blue Point are just the most incredible people. Look at the talent. Yo. soul up right off your forehead. <sighs> oh, oh, oh my god, we've been on for like three hours. It might be time to get some tasty pi Oh, what on earth? It's incredibly awesome. It's alive. Aged spice. Good Lord. I don't know exactly if it's my posture or something, but like, the back of my head is just being a big pain in the ass. Shit. Oh my god. This is incredible. Is your chair good? I mean, I've had some issues with the chair, but, like, I've never, ever had this sort of tension 
pain in the back of my head like this, like, ever in my life. Well, I'll see you later, man. This is like so cool to wander around in. Get off of track, for God's sake. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Do not like doing that. No, no, no. Ooh, is this? Well, the haters almost got some there. I know the haters are just like, No! <laughs> you regained his composure! I hate him! Dead hater voice. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh God. Yeah, I can feel the back of my neck just like tensing up, man. Ugh. Ooh, we. We should probably take a break, stretch our bodies and our minds. Mmm. <laughs> Or I'll just stream like this. Oh yeah, that's it. This means I just got my PS5. This is top of the list of must-buys. Heard this defined as a game that was a must-buy for the PS3, and the only reason to own a PS3. And now it's a must-buy for PS5, and the only reason to buy a PS5. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, oh. Yeah, we might take a little break in a minute so I can just stretch my little body and mind. Hmm. I mean, this imagery is just incredible. I want to look all these places up on PS3 after this is done.
Oh, that is so rad. Alright, so is this the only way that I can go? Is it just like I run from down there to up here and then that's that? I mean, I can go farther around. Maybe there's a shortcut around this way. Well, doesn't look like a particularly challenging journey for me to be, to be honest. Nine LMGs, baby. Might be nigh time to go farm those knights, you know. Come on, guys. Barley, 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 barley. Alright. Flame Lurker has entered the chat. <laughs> I'm hoping we just one-shot every boss forever. No, I'm not gonna go this way. It's not who I am. Ghost 77 Recons is happy 70th day nine. Currently watching the YouTube boss to catch up. Thanks for all the great time content. Man, we're so happy to have you for 70 months, Ghost 77 Recon. Thought there was even gonna be a boss fight. That's a debate. I mean blue points just incredible. I mean, the artistry of this is just sound. Oh, hi. Oh, the fucking camera kills me. Okay. I actually genuinely believe that I was, whoops, farther ahead. Uh, or farther away from the ledge. always crap in the series. I think it's one of the really big challenges with making a third-person action game. Is I just mean, like, getting control of that camera is just so hard because there's such an interesting perspective gap between the player's intentions and the game doing something automatic to help with that. A lot of damage, huh?
And here are my souls. I cannot tell where I am. Hey. Just want you to remember that for next time. Oh! Fuck me. I really gotta kill these guys next time, huh? Yeah, do you think the camera's a result of uh, controller accessibility? Yeah, uh, yeah, no, because I mean, like, with lock on, if you lock on, well, you're, you're, you're trying to account for this corner case where you're against a wall and you don't want to obscure yourself, so you try to make this, like, see through. But then, like, there's an enemy on top of you and that's rendering. I mean, I think you're just going to wind up with corner cases. Again, I really like this idea of framing certain things in the game. It's not like, here's what works and here's a problem. Oh my god, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Fuck. Mm. Alright. Prediction result is yes. Reward my hater ways. <laughs> All right. All right, let's go retrieve our souls. But I think that, like, you're just always going to wind up with some... I remember what I was saying before I... Threw my body from the cliff, which is that you will often hear people describe and discuss the problem with Thing X. When really, oftentimes, it's a consequence of the positive thing, not a independent problem. And an example is that, in a card game. You know what a real positive of a card game is? That you can draw all sorts of different things in the card game. Which means... You'll constantly get surprised, you'll get to make new plans. You will use cards that you might not have originally intended to use, but you wind up experiencing them because you randomly drew it this one time. A lot of really positive things come from, uh, you know, the, the randomness that comes from card games. But as a consequence of that, you can draw like dog shit and lose. Oh, good lord. I didn't realize I three shot. Come here. And so to say something like, ooh, let's get the randomness of a card game, but let's make sure that you can't draw poorly. It's like, no, no, those two things are actually fundamentally intertwined. <laughs> So it's kind of interesting to think about, like, this whole idea of locking on, I think is awesome. I think it is fan-fucking-tastic. But some of the consequences of this are that you wind up with a lot of corner casey garbage. And I think part of the way you mitigate that is you just change what players can and can't fight against. Like, these type of flying monsters with these types of spindly stairs, I think is just like, oh, okay, well, this creates too many corner case issues. Dude, I don't have so many unknown souls, man. Oh, damn. 
So as much as I get annoyed, I think it's less of a, the camera sucks, and more of like, you have to be very careful with how you design certain sequences. Haters are getting an 8 to 1 payout? Wow. Hope to teach these haters a lesson, you know. What is going on here? I'm just gonna wait for him to land. <laughs> that looks so funny, yeah, right? He's just like, I'm ready to fight! Oh! He's like, sinks down. I've played too many Souls games, I know this ridiculous bullshit. Too many Souls game for that nonsense not to trick me. I knew there was a payout on the other side. Point says, do you have any opinions on fantasy elevators? Well, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I mean, I think that elevators have a long and storied history in games. Dating way back to the juicy platformers of old. Oh, hey guys. Stay anymore. So where do we go? Literally, where do I go? I guess I'm gonna go all the way back, and then the path will be unblocked. Hello, Despy. Seems like a good a place as any to stop. 